I'm an a animator and a director by trade, like that's what I do for a living, but I'm, I was an artist before that. But So I find as I, I work in, in film more and more, like my work more and more about building worlds, so and worlds within worlds, so the piece is really ab about that. But there's also um, about the, the, you know, the shifting balance between public and private that social media brings. The show is about social media, so um, in particular, like, uh, if you notice the piece, you, you can't look directly into the house, you have to peer in, like, you're, you're looking in on something that's private, but then when you look in, it's actually a public world, it's a city. But then all the billboards are a conversation between two people, but it's a conversation over social media. So again, it's back and forth between public, private, public, private. So it's kind of commentary on that. And also a little bit, I think there's elements of just the paranoia that comes from modern times of living in a surveillance state. This, and the scene part's more about that, where you have the board is carved with a, an organic conversation, but it's once again, it's via text message. Um, and then the scene, you know, like that's what comes up when you get a message from someone, but then, you know, with the revelations from, from Snowden, we, we know that it's not just being seen by us, it's being recorded by our government and, and stored for however long or forever, probably. So, so there's that, the, if you'll notice, the, the, the shininess of the technology on the scene is all breaking away and it's just the rusty machine, old machine that has always been there. This, this uh, oppressive surveillance state that the apparatus has been around for a long time. They just put a sheen on it and we, and we all bought into it because it was shiny and new. Once I heard about the concept of the show, as far as materials went, I instantly wanted to take uh, the idea of electronics and how they are completely just its invisible space to having something that's completely opposite. So wood, plexiglass, things that have a real 3D texture to them. That's instantly what I wanted to do. So our piece is called Through Rose Colored Filters. Uh, we have two pieces. One says hashtag no filter, the other says hashtag no such thing. Uh, I personally am the kind of person who has kind of extracted myself from the social media world in many ways. Um, I do find that a lot of what you see and a lot of what people present is very inauthentic and very curated. It's very interesting and I love it. I love exploring it and I love checking it all out, but um, we are so caught up in the fact of always looking our best on the internet. We're posting, you know, photos of our dinner uh, that is our best dinner we've ever made and uh, the next day we're eating craft dinner. And so I feel that what we're posting on the internet is essentially post it through a rose-colored filter at all times. We're always showing our best side off. Our piece is uh, plywood, and we hand shows it so it has perfect, or a really, really beautiful, fluid, uh, linear image to it. Um, then we hand cut each letter, which even just breaking down words into exact letters and hand cutting each letter like that even kind of strengthened our phrase even more for us and then gave it a whole different weight to it and then the third layer is plexiglass to add that physical filter as you would add a filter to any sort of photo so yeah we wanted to we wanted it to be essentially a 3d object in the full sense of the word without being a complete sculpture uh, I think the 3D element, by putting an actual filter in front of it, does uh, speak to that and filters our message in itself, just adding to that ironic level. I, I've tried to style it in sort of the way of like a, a 70s movie poster, kind of collaging different elements, um, trying to capture that the tension between characters and then using text from text messages to, to show how uh, now communication in, in those sort of situations has become lost, like BRB, the you know, acronym for Be Right Back, is, I don't know, pretty impersonal. Um, same with a lot of other phrases. Okay, so my piece is um, inspired by um, 
the relationship status updates that are on Facebook and just how flippant they are. Like, it can be a relationship that's, I don't know, 10 years long or a marriage ending and people update it and it's just this like little blip, it goes down the news feed and it's super casual. And so I uh, just kind of, I did this kind of sarcastic piece. It's, a, it's an illustration of uh, a woman in her underwear, um, but she has the head of an, a crocodile, and in her mouth is this little blue bird. And uh, the title of the piece, or the title of the piece, is um, "This Relationship Status Has Been Changed to It's Complicated." And so, I mean, the, there's certain species of crocodiles and certain species of birds that have these symbiotic relationships, where the bird cleans out the mouth of the crocodile, and the crocodile it like it feeds the bird and helps the crocodile. And he, I mean, he could. It's a very like, kind of strange relationship and it looks pretty scary, but um, they kind of help each other out, but it's also very unlike anything else. Anyways, that's kind of what it was inspired by. And uh, yeah, it was really interesting to spend the time thinking about, uh, thinking a little bit more about, because I've definitely done that, like changed a relationship status on Facebook and it felt really stupid about it. So, <laughs> but we do it anyway. It's just interesting. My piece is called Bad Things Happen, and when Lazo asked me about doing something for the show, it, it, it stressed me out, and I, I, I don't really, uh, internet culture and those sorts of things don't excite me, and I, I find that sort of thing kind of irritating most of the time, so, uh, anyway, when, it, when I started thinking about text and, and words, something that resonate resonates with me is when when my mother used to get uh, chain handwritten chain mail in the post and I remember reading them as a child and them freaking me out because they would uh, I, I, doing research on them there's there's a there's a number of them but the one the ones that I'm I, I'm referring to are the, the, the ones that are based in superstition and they always were quite threatening that if you if you if you sent these letters to 25 people your life you would find for good fortune but if you didn't horrible fucking things were going to happen to you uh, and and in researching them they're, they're, they're all I think kind of based out of maybe one or two letters and it, there's a formula and format of course and, and it, and I called my mom, and it was it was fun to kind of have that conversation. It got me excited about, it. and she and she was she was into it and excited about it. And then she actually got one sent to her from a friend via email, uh, like a day after I'd called her and had this conversation. And and uh, and so uh, my piece. So I made a I made a, a sort of regular. Uh, I made a letterhead and then a, and then a chain mail, handwritten chain mail. And I screen printed a bunch uh, to have here at the show. And then there's an envelope, a box to put them in, uh, a little pad of paper and, and a pen uh, with the idea that people can, can start sending these to friends. I'm going to mail them. And maybe this letter will, will, will end up in the circuit of, of chain letters and, and be, be sent around the world. And, and people will be copying it and sending it off and, and it'll be freaking people out. <laughs>